this is an honor. I get to introduce one of our fellow members, and many of you know Rob well, and some of you maybe not so well, but I'm going to give a bio, and I actually learned some cool things from this. So Rob joined our Bellevue Rotary Club in 1986, which makes him a 34-year member of our Bellevue Rotary Club. His father, Ken Rose, was also a, a BRC member prior to Rob joining. Rob has two hats that he wears professionally. He's the owner of Brandt Photographers and has been since 1985, taking over from his parents. Originally starting in 1949, Brandt Photographers has been Bellevue's family portrait studio, though nowadays Brandt focuses on corporate portraiture and executive headshots. Rob's also the founder and president of the Rose Fund, International Fund for Children, a nonprofit organization which helps children with disabilities in Nepal. Rob has traveled to Nepal 29 times over the last 23 years, or over 23 years, often leading groups of Rotarians and volunteers. And I know a number of folks on this call right now have been to uh, Nepal with Rob and speak very highly of that experience, life-changing. Rob's a very proud member of our Bellevue Rotary Club and is one of our past presidents, for those who, of you who don't know. Um, he's been work, able to work through our club and Rotary International to accomplish all kinds of things in Nepal. The total value of the projects there work out to about 1.5 million in grant funding um, for in partnership with most of the Nepali clubs. Um, the most impactful of these programs was a few years ago. Um, it was uh, uh, utilizing a Rotary 3H grant funding uh, valued at about 330,000. So Rob got a third of a million dollars from Rotary International to go to this program. And they funded a social media campaign that ran nationwide, uh, billboards, TV ads, um, all kinds of things. And it was about We Are Able. It made a huge impact on the whole mindset of a population of a country. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Inspiration Playground, Bellevue Rotary's signature project in the downtown Bellevue Park, was accomplished in partnership with the city of Bellevue. It was, it was a chance to engage the entire club on an amazing project and journey. I got to be on the committee for that. It was awesome. Um, overall, with all the grants from state and county and city, et cetera, and private fundraising, we ended up uh, with about five and a half million dollars on that. So as you'll hear from Rob's presentation, what he learned from working with children with disabilities in Nepal became the inspiration for Inspiration Playground. Please welcome Rob Rose. Great, thank you so much, TJ. Okay, I'm going to, I'm just really excited. I'm really proud to, to be the first presenter at the first Bellevue Rotary Club virtual meeting. So let's see how all this goes. And I've got an interesting presentation today. I'm going to pull that up. So uh, as TJ said, um, one of my proudest moments was working with the club, the entire club on this project, Inspiration Playground. But I think what a lot of people don't know is the story behind the, yeah, the concept, the inspiration for inspiration. So I'm going to, going to give you some of that background today at my, with my presentation today. So anything that, uh, that I've done in my life and through Rotary is, has forever been changed and, and was benefited by my Rotary Youth Exchange experience to Calcutta, India in 1974 and 75. I was 16 years old at that time, and it was just such an, an amazing eight-month experience going to school in Calcutta and staying with host families and making friends and really becoming part of that fabric of society. And it was just an amazing world perspective shift for me on that trip. And, you know, it affected me then, but even to this day, it, it affects how I think about things and how I, how I live my life and what I think about as far as human impact around the world. So my, as, as TJ said, uh, I've had a lot of experience working on projects 
in in Nepal. And I my first trip to Nepal was in 1997. And I volunteered for another nonprofit organization based out of Sausalito as a photographer to help their organization. And on that first trip, I met a Rotarian who has visited uh, our club. His name is R.R. Pandey. And he's a Rotarian. Uh, I met him on that first trip. We started doing rotary projects. And we did so many projects over the years. And, and um, we started to focus on, on helping kids with disabilities. And in 2006, we started our own local nonprofit I'm the founder president of the Rosen International Fund for Children, or TRIFC. If you jam all those letters together, it, it's terrific. So, so we started terrific to, to continue to support the kids that we started with those rotary projects. And I've been really fortunate to be involved with, with my own organization, but also continuing to be involved with Rotary in Nepal. And we're currently working on a school rebuilding project uh, with the Rotary Club of Dulakel, and we're the we're the uh, lead club on that. Bellevue Rotary Club is. So this the the seed of this project for Inspiration Playground came from this Rotary Club meeting in uh, in 2006, and I was attending the Rotary Club of Kopandol that's near to uh, Kathmandu. And I had helped them connect with an organization called Disabled New Life Center or DNC. And they were, they were helping uh, creating projects and helping this group of kids in this residential center, Disabled New Life Center. And after that meeting, they had a committee meeting to discuss how they were going to support and help that organization, the kids at that Center for Kids with Disabilities. And as they started talking, the, the voices started getting louder and louder. They started yelling and shouting at each other, really arguing. Uh, I was really uh, startled. I was surprised. I was kind of shocked. But then it struck me that they were just so passionate about this project. And that argument and the conflict, that was amazing. It was great because it meant how much they cared about that, that group of kids. And here's the, here's the kids along with the, some volunteers. And um, I can show you with my little arrow. There's Terry Posner right at the back. Terry went on that trip. We had quite a number of volunteers on that trip. And um, we had kids from Garfield High School and Rotarians from a lot of different clubs. And also the Copendol Rotarians are in that uh, photograph as well. And a bunch of really great kids who I'm still in contact with to this day. And we still, my own organization, provides support for Disabled New Life Center. And here's some of the Rotarians working at the center. They did painting. They did, uh, they painted the exterior. They fixed the bathrooms. They improved the kitchen and dining room. They really got hands-on involved. So, so not only, it's more than you just write a check, they got emotionally invested in this project. And so that was the like light bulb moment for me that, that that was, to me, was the secret sauce, the recipe to, to many things that I've done since that point. I've always hearkened back to this concept which was getting people with and without disabilities together will result in a very rapid perceptual shift. And so all these uh, volunteer trips that I've led over the years, whether it was Rotarians and volunteers from the US or whether it was those like those Copendol Rotarians in Nepal, when they first meet and interact with a kid with disability, there's like sadness and, and pity. They really, it's a very uh, emotional moment for a volunteer. But when they get in and interact and play with that kid, 
within a really short period of time, they've forgotten the disability altogether. They're seeing the, the, the child is no longer defined by their disability. They're defined as a kid, a human being, a person first. And so seeing that shift take, a, take place like hundreds of times, every single time, it went from, from sadness to compassion and empathy and understanding and tolerance. That was the seed that, that, that was the concept, the initial concept for Inspiration Playground was that. That was my underlying agenda, getting people with and without disabilities together. There you see some more pictures of volunteers, Diane, John Lee and um, Lori Stein and Joyce Dolan. So, so that was in about 2006. And in 2009 or 10, uh, I was approached to, to, to see if I wanted to be president of the club, uh, Rotary Club, our club, in 2012 and 2013. And I agreed. And I was kept thinking about what I might be able to do with our club to create kind of a signature project. What could we do? Because I'd been in the club since 1986. And I really wanted to try something different. So I found out I was going to be president about three years ahead of time. And I wanted to try to find, I mean, just had this idea that could I find some concept that I learned in Nepal and incorporate it into something we might do at Bellevue Rotary Club. So I took this fateful bicycle ride in September of 2011. And these are pictures from that bicycle ride. <clears throat> I was riding around in uh, uh, the Sammamish River Trail and from uh, Marymore Park out to Woodenville. And when I got to the riverfront uh, park in Woodenville, I saw this big rotary wheel in the ground in tiles. And I saw these other plaques in the ground. So obviously this had been some sort of a project that Rotary had, uh, you know, had a leadership position in different corporate uh, companies and individual tiles. Uh, everybody had contributed to the, to the uh, construction of that park. So I went to the Rotary Club of Woodenville. I talked to the president. I think it was John Hughes at that time. And I said, uh, how'd you do that? And he told me about how they partnered with the city of Woodenville to, to fundraise and design and plan and implement that park. So then it was like, ah, so then I thought, well, you know, maybe there might be some possibility here. And before I contacted anybody in Rotary, I, I asked to meet with Patrick Ferran from the city of Bellevue Parks Department. And I met with Patrick and I said, you know, I'm gonna be president. I don't know if my club is gonna do what I'm suggesting, but, you know, I'm thinking about how we could get people with and without disabilities together and maybe a playground renovation, or maybe we have a small park in the Bellevue Park system that we could, we could adopt and, and uh, transform into something more accessible for people with disabilities. And he said, you know, Rob, when we built the downtown park, that playground, the existing playground in the park, was never supposed to be a permanent fix fixture. That playground was only a placeholder for something that we had envisioned bigger and better in the future. And perhaps we could partner the city of Bellevue with your Rotary Club to make a playground that would be inclusive for kids with disabilities and kids without disabilities. Parents and veterans with disabilities, anybody with mobility, limit, mobility limitations would be able to access all elements in this playground. And when he told me about that, 
I thought that was the best, most awesome opportunity for us and for our club to have a major impact in our community. So then it happened. I went to the bill, went to our board of directors and and we I convinced the board of directors. They all voted 100% in favor of this project. And I talked to past presidents, current president, future presidents. Everybody in our club was all in on this project. And we did an MOU with the city and I talked to all the city council members. They were all in, you know, Conrad Lee from our club was on the, and uh, Kevin Wallace was on the council and everybody was so excited about this opportunity and that's how it got started. This was our logo and Robin Blackburn, who, who was a member of our club at that time, very talented graphic artist. She did so many of the graphics for our promotional campaign because a $5.5 million capital campaign is like a major mammoth undertaking with all volunteers from our club. So from the city, we had Patrick Ferran, Glenn Coast was our really our lead person in the parks department. Uh, you, I don't have proper individual photographs, but you see Terry Smith in the green jacket. He himself has a disability and he's with the parks department and we connected so well and we worked together you know, before we started this project, we spent so many hours talking about like, how are we going to plan this and what's it going to be like and, and, and so many different elements. He was so passionate about it, as was Pam Fairman, was another part of our city of Bellevue team that helped us with the project. Another really important part of the project was our landscape architect, and Carol Henry and her co company, Design Concepts, out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. They were our uh, playground designers and they had experience designing uh, accessible, inclusive playgrounds. And by inclusive, it means all elements of the playground be can be accessed by kids with disabilities and of course, kids without you know, all abilities. And from our own club, uh, these two people who are no longer members of the club, but have a place in that playground, have a place in my heart, without whom we would not have accomplished this, this really fantastic project. Pat Naslow, who came up to me after I spoke to the club early in 2012, and I made a short presentation and she said, Rob, I love this idea, how can I help? She became co-chair for this project and is a very detailed person who worked so hard on many of the government grants. So we had grants from the federal government, I think like 1.5 million from the Washington state government, from King County, and she was just a whiz at, at those detail programs and was such an amazing project partner for me for, some, for all of those years it took to do the project. Liz Swanson was in our club and she had run capital campaigns before. And so she was an awesome resource. And these two people put in hundreds of hours of work. We had to go pitch this project to so many uh, corporate uh, corporations, foundations and individuals like Microsoft, found Microsoft uh, Corporation and um, Puget Sound Energy, uh, American Family Insurance. Uh, we talked to uh, David Schooler, SRO, uh, SRO and the Dance Foundation. I mean, thanks so much, David, who believed in, in me and believed in our project enough to be the first major contribution with a $300,000 uh, grant. And that really, uh, what, it solidified our ask and it made it, it, it just gave us so much momentum to go forward. So thank you, David Schooler, for believing in this project. When I approached the club about it, I felt that we had the expertise in the club to do this. And through the, through the experience of this project, 
we had total club engagement and total club involvement. So everyone participated in one way or another. It was truly a group effort. Our committee, I mean, there's just too many people to think, thank. I'm so sorry I can't thank everybody because it would literally take the half an hour. But, you know, Dan McDonald with his, uh, with his political expertise, Rob McKenna and uh, Cyrus Habib, and I could just go down the line, John Campbell, just everybody, uh, you know, everybody in the club, and Fred Auk and the, the construction group, it was just awesome. After we, we, we made the, decided to go ahead with the project and really we rolled up our sleeves, we had a groundbreaking ceremony there. You can see, we, I don't know if you can tell, but we had golden shovels. We weren't able to keep the golden shovels, which was un, a little sad, but I think they're gonna use it for other groundbreakings. We got to experience how this uh, playground was built. We had two or three meetings in the park there you see Jim Price, who has since passed on. Jim was such a great uh, supporter of the project and a good friend. And there's Stan with his trademark hat. Jamal, who is now in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> joining us today. Uh, thank you so much, Jamal. Norris, we miss you, Norris. And that was, I believe, on that opening day morning with Barbara Morgan and Liz Swanson and myself. And uh, we raised more money than this, but we did pre present the city of Bellevue with a very big check, both literally and figuratively, and that we presented that at one of the council meetings. And it was quite an achievement. And after that, we continued to raise more money. Here's a quote from Pam Fairman, who worked so uh, hard on this project, that Inspiration Playground is the most popular playground in the park system. Any sunny day and really any cloudy day, you'll see hundreds and maybe even thousands of kids playing in the playground. I think now, I'm sure it's closed right now, so that's a very sad thing. To, to have during this time of, I mean, this critical crisis time during the, during the virus around the world. It's locked down in Nepal, you know, at, just like it is here. So I've been in contact with everybody in Nepal. So I'll be so excited on the day that it reopens and kids are able to come out and play once again. From Kim Indicar who works with uh, children and adults with disabilities here in Bellevue. Uh, she's heard from parents about how important this opportunity to play is and, and what kind of joy it brings to the parents and the families and the children themselves. So now I'm going to hand this over. I'm going to hand the program over to TJ, who's had some personal experiences in the playground. And TJ, take it away. Thanks, Rob. Ed, that's wonderful to hear the whole story about that. Having been through it, but not seen it through your eyes, it's fun to hear about it. I've told Rob a number of times uh, after I've been to the park on my device, my uh, mountain trike that you've saw, seen in those pictures, um, I often go down to the downtown park and do a couple loops around. It's a nice little workout. And I always spend time in the Inspiration Playground. And I'm in something that you know, it brings curiosity uh, or it inspires curiosity. And so I ended up talking with people and I've talked with so many different parents of kids of all abilities. They're at that park. Uh, I can't count the times that I've talked with them and the comments that I've heard people saying, we live in Vancouver. We come here twice a year to Bellevue. And one of the main reasons is we can come visit this park. I've uh, heard people in Seattle area say, oh yeah, this is by far the best park for our kids. And parents of kids with different abilities have brought their kids down to the park to uh, do things with their siblings or with their friends that they can't do at the regular parks that they have. Um, 
I get the opportunity to see things from a little bit different perspective because I'm sitting a little bit lower <laughs> than a, an adult standing. And I get to see some of the smiles on these kids' faces. Saw a kid in a heavy uh, electric powered wheelchair on the big rubber bouncy thing, trampoline deal. And the parents were helping him bounce in his giant heavy wheelchair there. And I thought this kid's never gotten to experience anything like that. He is now. How cool is that? And I've had the opportunity to hop out of that thing and let some little kids try it, try my device. And that whole arena is such a, a, a wonderful place to tie all the people together. It's just all the way around. It's been an honor to be part of it. And it's really cool to be down there, talk with people and say, well, yeah, our Rotary Club had something to do with this <laughs> in a kind of quiet way. And they, uh, they're always really thankful. So great idea. Great job, everybody. Um, thanks for this opportunity. It was just, it continues to be absolutely wonderful. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to, I, thanks TJ, that was really wonderful observations. And like TJ said, he's, he can see it from a different perspective when he goes and visits the park and the playground. Now I'm going to play the video, a short video that was on our website for those of you who haven't seen it, or for those of you who have, it's about three minutes. It was created by a company that uh, volunteered to help with that and then kind of re-edited by Carl Vanderhoek. So Carl, thank you for the for the editing on that. So I'm going to play that video now. Rotary had such a strong vision on bringing a place that both children and adults can come in and be side by side with typically abled and people with different challenges. And it's going to be a space that is really special. Not a lot of communities have what we're going to be having here in Bellevue. And it matters to the people we serve and those of whom, like the Rotarians, that have contributed mightily to this project. I think it's very representative of the area. The area is a very giving, caring city. To have something like this that is so inclusive and so accessible to everyone, I think is so crucial from a community aspect. Rob basically introduced the concept of universal accessibility. The idea is that everybody, no matter what the age and what the ability, will be able to enjoy the playground. I've been working in Nepal since 1997, and I was working with a lot of kids with disabilities. What I noticed was that everybody's initial response to meeting somebody with a disability was kind of a pity. But as soon as they started interacting with the kids with disabilities, you could see this perceptual shift take place, and they forgot the disability altogether. So I wanted to try to develop a project where I can incorporate something I'd learned in Nepal. And the opportunity presented itself with the Inspiration Playground and Sensory Gardens in the downtown Bellevue Park. My son Landon is on the autism spectrum. So if we go to a playground that just has monkey bars to, to play on, he can't utilize those. And so then he's usually sitting at a table. So having an inclusion spot is great because then he can have the more typical childhood experience uh, versus feeling isolated from the rest of the group. As parents, that's what we hope for. You know, we want Ben to be included. We want our son to be um, embraced and included. I have a child with special needs. My best friends don't but their best friend does. And so I'm making it emotional. <laughs> so even if you're not impacted directly, you know somebody that is. And having a place for their child to go just to be able to be a kid is just a blessing. It should happen because we should have like lots of fun playing with kids with different abilities, like kids with Down syndrome, kids in wheelchairs, and kids who have walkers. I think that's the ultimate aim of this facility and something I'm really looking forward to seeing. And I think that message that we're sending to businesses, to the cities, to our communities is so crucial. And as parents of a kiddo that has some challenges, we appreciate that. And we thank everybody involved for getting this up off the ground. Okay, so we did this. This is a we project, so it was everyone in the club. And you all inspired me every day, every way, in every way, 
through the many like roller coaster ups and downs. It was truly a jump off a cliff kind of a project. There was a chance for, for failure uh, so many times at every turn. Uh, but everybody in the club was very patient with me. And, and I learned so much about uh, this was just an extraordinary experience for me. And I feel I think so many other people in the club. I felt our club had the expertise. I felt we had the leadership, the contacts in the club, and the sheer horsepower to get it done. And we did. And I'm so eternally grateful for everyone who played a part in this project, Inspiration Playground. So now I will turn this back over to Rochelle. Hi, everyone. So we have time for either one long question or two short questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat. I know earlier Kim Lorenz asked, um, are you able to share this video for Inspiration Playground? Yes, and uh, am I not, I'm not muted. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey's putting this all together with links to the links to the video and so you can anyone can share it. And this is so great for our newer members who don't know a lot about the history of the park. I know um, my daughter Charlotte walks past the park every day now yeah. um, and points and says it's closed yeah. and she can't wait for it to, to open up again. Yeah, uh, it's so hard to have it, all of that sitting, all of those outdoor areas and recreation areas are just sitting out there, but it's just not, Yeah. And it's not, we can't just, can't do that now. Madam right. President, Rob, uh, Bob Wallace asked further up in the chat as well about how the fundraising ended up uh, post-project for the playground. Um, so we, we ended up, I think we were maybe about $100,000 short of our goal, something like, but we got close enough where, I mean, we'd raised so much money that the city put in the rest of the, I mean, they just allocated the rest of the money for the for the playground. And the city ended up putting in a much more substantial contribution than they had originally planned. But they they kind of they stepped up as well. But we we came very close to our actual fundraising goal. And um, kudos to everyone in the club. Thanks, Akshat. Thanks to everybody, all your great com comments. Uh, yeah, okay, Andy has a question. If I have a chance, can I answer Andy's question? Sure. Okay, so this was one, this was a, I mean, this was uh, such a surprise for me. Um, uh, at one meeting, one of the, one of the meetings, uh, I think it was um, Mike Everett and um, and Andy, 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 the, our accordion, our accordion Andy. Murkovich. Andy Murkovich, thank you. So Andy Murkovich, they said, hey, we've got something we want to give you at the Rotary meeting. And it was during my year as president. And I said, well, what are you going to do? I mean, I need to know how to plan the time, right, Rochelle? I can't have something go on too long. So tell me what you're going to do. I said, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. It'll be fine. And so they came up and uh, they gave me a check for, I think, $280,000 that day. And it was money that we'd had in a, an account for Make-A-Wish Found. We had like a Make-A-Wish committee. And um, Make-A-Wish Foundation, the big foundation, was really doing all of that work around the country. They'd kind of taken that concept. And we weren't granting wishes anymore. And they wanted to put that money towards like kids, play, kids a kids program, and particularly kids with disabilities. And so they gave me, again, like a giant check that day. And, I I'm sure I started crying on that day because it was uh, such a wonderful surprise. So thanks, Andy, for asking about that. I think that's the last question okay. because we are an on-time club during my presidency year. So thank you so much, Rob. We're donating 1,500 pounds of food in your name to Harvest Against Hunger. So thank you very much. I know there was a question from Armin about um, posting this on YouTube. I know Jeffrey is doing um, 
something with YouTube on the live stream and we'll get back to you on what we're doing to post and save these meetings. They are being recorded. Next week's program is our own Lisa Rosenblum from the King County Library System. She's gonna talk about how the King County Library System is serving the community now and in the future during the pandemic. Thank you so much to Barbara Morgan who hosted our pre-meeting social. And if you feel comfortable with your web camera and your mic, let me know, email me, and I'll put you on the schedule to host that pre-meeting social so we can get together. And thanks so much um, to our producer and our CTO, Jeffrey Van Gogh. We are adjourned. Thanks everyone for coming to the meeting and have a wonderful week. Goodbye.